League of Legends is a game with, as of making this video, 123 champions. Combine that with the number of items, runes, and masteries available to customize gameplay, and you have a game with a near infinite number of ways to play it, even if the LCS would sometimes make you think there's only about three. In this series, I will be looking into some of the players that have made it their mission to thoroughly explore a given corner of that meta multiverse, the One Trick Ponies. Players who play countless games on just a single champion, exploring every possible avenue of play and learning the game from a sometimes unique standpoint. They narrow the field down to a single point, and in doing so can find and stretch the limits of their chosen champions in ways less experienced players are simply unable to. Today we will be taking a look at Cho'Gath, and our gameplay comes all the way from Korea. Normally this is where I'd give credit to the player, but as I don't speak Korean, I won't be attempting their name today. If you'd like to see a profile, runes, or masteries, check the description below. My name is Octavian, and welcome to episode 1 of Octavian's Stable. Hello friends and welcome to a sort of special edition cast of Open Mic. Or perhaps it's going to be its own series. I mean, I came up with a catchy title for it at least. I like it. Octavian's Stable. It is of course a um, series focused pretty much exclusively on the role of one trek ponies in high level play and how they impact the games that they play in and what interesting strategies and theory crafting they bring to bear when they play the champion that of course is their pony in this case we have a very strange otherworldly spiky and probably deadly pony in the form of Cho'Gath and um, as I said earlier my Korean ain't so strong. So, one caveat for this game, I am going to be referring to a lot of the champions by champion, rather than by player name, something I usually try to do as infrequently as possible, keeping it to a sort of 8 to 2 ratio of when I refer to them, 8 being player, 2 being champion. But uh, it's simply not going to be possible here, as we see a little bit of a duel. Not really a duel, so much as just a acknowledgement of each other's existence between Ezreal and Corky in the tribush there. Um, and it's simply because on the American client, I cannot see the Korean characters first off. They're all just boxes for me. And second, even if I could, it may as well be ancient Greek hieroglyphics. As far as I'm concerned, I simply don't understand it. <laughs> I wish I spoke Korean. It would be really useful, one, in the esports scene, which I inhabit at points. And two, just because it's such a beautiful looking language. But... I have never never really come in contact with it outside of my work in League of Legends as we see Bard going a little bit aggressive on to Korgi here. There's the Thunderlord proc, but a nicely timed Eye of the Storm from Janna will keep him safe from the majority of the chunk there. We do see a pretty aggressive push from Bard and Ezreal early on. Bard actually using those meeps on the minion wave to push it up and get that early level 2 for Ezreal here. Nice stun by the Gosling Binding against the wall. There's the shift forward. The exhaust immediately dropped from Dopu. A little bit too late, honestly. The majority of the burst from Ezreal had already come out. That's a summoner disadvantage now for Blue Side, which may prove to be rough for them. As another Cosmic Binding, it connects again on the Corky. The Ignite is ticking. Corky is surely going to be perishing here. No, he makes it back to the turret. He has 10 health left. Bard, under the turret's fire, is going to be nearly decimated by it. He's going to be going down. One, one more auto. No, there it is. The Zephyr from Dopu as he hits level 2. Finishes off the Wandering Caretaker, and that was just so painfully close, but he's just a deflated little doll of cosmic sadness now in the corner. All of his beard powers could do him not, but there's the flash in from Ezreal. The Arcane Shift forward as well. Flash next to him to ensure the Arcane Shift damage would land on the Corky. Does manage to pick up the kill, but Dopu is bloodthirsty support, looking for another kill here in the bottom lane, and he picks it up. Might be falling to the Lee Sin, though. Shows up just in time to clean up the last of the bottom laners on both teams here in the bottom side. We've had every single bot laner die before we've seen four minutes hit the clock. I think that's something of a record here. Pedo Sin now coming in, lands the red buff empowered auto attack. Help Picks is going to keep 3 2 1 alive a little bit longer, but it will not mitigate enough damage to prevent Kale from getting the kill as Pedo Sin takes a few turret shots to make sure that that happens. There's the rupture from Cho'Gath, and this is the matchup that we were particularly interested in this game. And um, while we're up here, and while we're looking at a bit of a less exciting matchup, Cho'Gath versus Malphite, I may as well lay some of the ground rules for this sort of mini-series. Um, 
while we are going to be looking primarily to delve into why one trick ponies work and the interesting theory behind them we are going to be shoutcasting these games as full games which means i'm going to be covering the action in the other lanes as well because to simply watch one person's lane for the majority of a game does tend to leave you a bit dry on the action front as we see a gank coming into the bottom lane very nicely timed tornado is going to be knocking up lee sin but a summonerless corky that far up the lane it doesn't matter how many nice tornadoes you land it's still going to be crackers for that Corky. That is another kill going with the red team, evening it up here. But it looks like Peterson is looking to make the cross map pressure in the top lane a reality. And with an absolutely beautifully executed Nidalee gank. Walking right up through that lane, he manages to get another kill for himself. Actually, potentially could have been avoided by Malphite here. Zeroger still has both summoners available. Ignite probably wouldn't have done much there, but had he had the reflexes to... Flashing that spear would have certainly saved his life. I can't blame him, though. You can't always expect there to be a Nidalee in the bush. If you always play around Nidalee being in the bush, then you eventually give up too much CS, and it's it's like Nidalee was there the whole time anyways. 3 2 one a little bit far ahead here, trying to keep this minion wave from hitting the turret. Doesn't want to lose too much farm. Lulu in the first few levels of the game doesn't have a great way of farming under turret unless the uh, Glitter Lance is lined up perfectly well with the minion hit points. And Mia Ping in the bot lane is going to cause Dopey to look for this dry bush, but there were a lot of people sitting in and beautifully timed Tornado is going to knock up Lee Sin before he can finish off the Q secondary though. And now Bard going aggressive for the kill under the turret is going to instantly regret it. Giving another kill over to Peterson's Nidalee who's been roaming the map with impunity in these first few minutes. Oh, nice sidestep on the spear there. That's going to be a turnaround from the Lee Sin. But he will, be, he will be trading one for one and giving a third kill over to the Nidalee jungle, who is starting to become a powerhouse here. I would be very scared of that kitty cat if I were on red team right now. Zero is going to trade back a little bit more damage. Something that's interesting to keep an eye on here is when Cho'Gath chooses to use Vorpal Spikes and when he does not... That's one of the smaller details of Cho'Gath play that can sometimes get placed a miss. Whoa! <laughs> just, there was nothing like flashy or fancy about that play. Nobody used anything big or anything. They just kind of walked at each other and then Shogath ate him. Malphite really seriously underestimated the amount of damage that Shogath would do there. True damage true damage is, um, is a jerk sometimes. As we see Lulu just about getting away by the skin of her teeth in the mid lane. Peterson hunting for that last kill in the jungle, but I don't think he's going to be finding it here. Lulu is a tricky one to catch. Leaps over the wall in cougar form. Finds a bard instead and chooses to take a bite out of that. Gets some good damage as he goes through the journey, but doesn't quite have enough to finish him off. And now the baton is passed over to Lee Sin here. Peterson with another leap is going to be able to get away from the blind monk. As you have a teleporting Chugath into the top lane to discourage any continued chase. That is teleport burned from red... Uh, blue team, pardon me. Colorblind over here. That is teleport burned from blue team's top laner though. He's going for a interesting item build here. He's got a bit of an early lead in this lane with almost a 30 CS gap against his um, opposing number, the Malphite. And of course he's got that kill up and a dark seal as well. So he's really looking to stack that early AP with a needlessly large rod here as well. There's the ulti from M0 here looking to try and make something happen here as he does have Lee Sin coming up through the river. Nice flash from Cho'Gath. We'll nullify any potential there. Perhaps if Zeroger had held on to the Unstoppable Force a little bit longer, they might have been able to finalize that kill, but there was vision in the river for Cho'Gath. And I imagine they knew that. Or else they wouldn't have made that play so very aggressively. He was trying to preempt Cho'Gath, realizing that the Lee Sin was there. Though, of course, that aggressive of a play does kind of signal to the enemy laner, my jungler is coming. Run away. So, I don't know if there really was a way that he could have made that kill happen. But they at least did burn the flash, and that's going to be pretty impactful in a uh, low mobility laner like Cho'Gath. Especially against somebody with essentially targeted CC, like a Malphite. Oh, there's the flash away from Malphite, though. Ground Pound, going to be doing a little bit of damage, but I don't think it'll be enough. He's dying slowly and painfully, but he is dying, and there he goes underneath the turret, crumbling into pieces as Peterson picks up yet another kill. 4-0-1. Oh my god, Dope, you can you make it out by the skin of your teeth again? He flashes over the wall, the monsoon heal, just gonna be enough to keep him alive through the rest of the damage that Lee Sin had to throw at him. 
There's the flash forward into the elongated leap from the passive, and Peterson is unstoppable. 5-0 and 1. As in the mid lane, we see both utility ultimates popped there. Keep both utility mid laners alive, and there's 3-2-1 with the long range help picks into a glitter lance. Tempered fate, fly ah, tempered fate flies out. That's a tricky sentence to say. And it's going to be answered back with a flash from Corky off screen there. You could actually hear the sound effect if you were listening really closely. That's how I knew he flashed. And then I checked the cooldown up in the top left. I'm just that observant, guys. Yeah, that is going to be Corky's flash down. And interestingly enough, the Bard Ezreal lane is just getting these picks over and over again. There's Dope you, and this time he's not going to be making it out. Not by the skin of his teeth, not by the skin of anything. There's the Valkyrie away from Corky. There's the heel burned as well. And Bard, Burning Flash, is going to be able to get away from the turret. So it's not even a one-for-one -one trade. Bottom lane. Well, bottom lane's starting to look pretty rough for blue team. They've got this Cho'Gath rushing into what appears to be a Luton's Echo, actually, in the top. That's going to be quite a bit of damage coming from him. Oh, speaking of damage, there's a lot more into Zero Gear as Pedestin is dominating. And more importantly than the Cho'Gath, they have got this Nidalee, who is 6-0-1. She's going to be a bit of a focus for the next 10, 15 minutes of the game, which is when Nidalee really is the most impactful, before people can get that level 2 ultimate, and there's that sort of power differential between the fact that Nidalee doesn't have a real proper ultimate, and um, other champions having that big impact, big cooldown ability. Level 6 and level 11 are two points at which other champions sort of separate out from the Nidalee. But still, especially with as much of a lead as Peterson has, a two-level lead over the opposing jungler, I expect to see quite a bit of um, plays made by this cat. Speaking of plays, Lee Sin's looking to make some of his own. A little bit of a dangerous situation for him, though. Gets Zephyr, the tornado comes through, doesn't quite land on anybody. And again, neither does the Bard Q. Speaking of Qs, a Glitter Lance is going to fly out and catch the KL by the tail end. And the one lane we haven't talked too much about is this mid lane. I gave mention that they are both pretty high utility laners. And that may be one of the reasons why we're seeing such an aggressive item build path. Item build path, pardon me, from Cho'Gath. Oh, he finds Bard, and Bard might be in a bit of trouble. He silences him just as he gets through the journey, but there is the rupture. And there is a very, very dead Bard. I mean, he made a very pretty statue of a golden Cho'Gath for his funeral, but in the end, he's still dead. His tempered fate really didn't do very much there, and that's going to be an easy dragon call for blue team. The jungler levels ahead of the enemy jungler. That's a pretty significant advantage when doing an objective like this, by the way, because of how much damage it adds to smite. And on top of that, just the raw damage output that they have in these two massive AP powerhouse threats. Cho'Gath and Nidalee. Speaking of AP powerhouse threats, we have Kale going at it in the mid lane. The Divine Intervention is going to buy enough time for Nidalee to show up. There's the Runic Echoes onto the Lulu. Nicely timed Wild Growth will keep Peterson off for a little bit longer, but not long enough. And now with the Teleport, Cho'Gath isn't even going to be losing any farm in top lane. He manages to pick up a kill onto Lee Sin and an assist. What was a modest to, well, not so modest at points, CS lead in the top lane has snowballed out of control for Malphite, who looks to be going into a rod of ages just to try and salvage at least the late game out of this matchup. If he can complete that item sometime in the next minute or two, that would be ideal for him because then he could um, have that stack up and then work on just being a sort of semi-tank for his team. Initiate. Bot, I guess, moving into the later game. And that's not to say that Red Team doesn't have a good late game. They've got Malphite, who's really strong. They have the Malphite-Lulu combo. Now that, that can absolutely cause havoc in the enemy, ba yeah, enemy backline if you place that correctly. And it's not so difficult to place correctly. The ultimate's pretty easy to combo and land. And they've got an Ezreal who looks to be building blue build, the most popular build on Ezreal currently. Uh, not really too much of a surprise there. And that does scale very well into the late game, especially against teams that want to chase you down and hunt you down like a uh, Nidalee would. And against immobile threats like a Cho'Gath. I think Blue Ezreal is actually quite a good pick against Blue Team's comp right now. Um, since Corky Janna doesn't really have the ability to catch you out, and Cho'Gath certainly won't either. Nidalee's going to be the real main threat here. 
There's a two-shot barrage coming across. That has lots of damage on the Peterson, but he does have that kill. He keeps him alive. Jana as well. The amount of peel from Blue Team here is massive, and Peterson makes his way out, but with no large cooldowns left available. Is Blue Team going to be able to still turn this one around? They do get the kill onto Lee Sin. And as I said, while they have no big cooldowns available, it looks like Red Team doesn't either. It's, well, there's one! Unstoppable Force comes in onto two members! And that's going to be a kill going over to Ezreal. One for one trade. As so many huge, impactful cooldowns were burned in mid lane. But both teams just have tons of peel and tons of disengage. That's what happens when you have a Lulu Bard on one side and a Janna Kale on the other. Speaking of Kale, goes down to give up a Rampage over to Ezreal. And that's going to be Red Team most likely taking the mid lane turret here. I don't see anything around to stop them. W comes in for a last minute shield, but I don't think it's going to be enough. In fact, they're kind of risking their lives with this attempted defense here. That's the package burn just to keep Corky safe. You really want to use that cooldown rather aggressively. It's like a second ultimate of sorts. <clears throat> Pardon me. Just had to grab a drink of water there. My throat's a little bit parched. I already did some shoutcasting earlier today for my own channel. Don't worry, guys. I'll be able to make it through. I'll be fine. Don't you worry about little old Octavian. As we return to a little bit of quiet on the board, the one thing that I haven't really seen contested that I'm a little bit surprised at not having seen contested, honestly, is this Rift Herald. That portion of the map has remained pretty dark for both teams the whole map. The whole match, pardon me. And with such a powerful lead in top lane in the jungle, I would have expected Blue Team to not really put emphasis on it, but at least just kind of cursorily take it while Red Team wasn't looking. Perhaps now is the moment as Peterson does wander towards that pit. No, it looks like he was just using it as a way to get over the wall quickly. Lead pass to the other side. Neither team really putting too much stock in that objective. Instead, opting to go for another kill here on the Malphite. And, well, this is, there's not really much I can say about that particular fight. The rupture landed and everything else followed up. It's pretty easy to land spears when the enemy's knocked up in the air and then slowed by 70-something percent. I forget the exact number, but it's it's a fairly high impact slow. It comes after Rupture lands you on the ground. If Cho'Gath can land his skill shots and get next to you, he is one of the most tanky and difficult to deal with mages in the game. His main problem, of course, being his early laning phase is rather weak. He's melee, which is a pretty objective disadvantage in most, lan in most lanes, pardon me. And he's not really got the ability to catch up to people. Against something like this Blue Ezreal, you could have some rough times in the late game, but if they just kind of bypass that and never let them get to the late game, that's not really going to be an issue. Blue Trinket to spot out the back line of Blue Team, and there's Dopey going down as he was occupying space a little bit too close. It's a red team, a little bit too far up that mid lane there, buddy. I don't know if there's anything going to materialize out of that pick. Dragon is down, and... Most of the lanes are pushed against Red Team, honestly, here. But it's still perfectly fine just to get some gold to lay off the pressure from the enemy team, because even if Red Team can't make anything happen by killing that Janna, they at least stall out Blue Team's objectives. As Perison, Pedersen, pardon me, finds Bard basing in the jungle in the wrong spot, and he does not see the spear coming. He's actually thrown slightly through the wall there. And Tricky would see a lot of Morgana players use, but can also work on pretty much any long-range line-based skill sock, which I suppose, at least Javelin Toss is kind of the definition of. When you throw it through a wall and they don't get to see the particle coming at them until it's a little bit too late most of the time. A very valuable um, trick to use whenever you can. It's one of the reasons why Morgana and Italy Picks like that are a lot more dangerous in choke points in the jungle than they are just out in the open in a lane. That in the absence of minions to body block any skill shots. Dragon going to be easily going over to blue team as the lack of Bard on the map proved a little bit more impactful than the lack of Janna on the map. Mostly given just to the fact that large objectives were up when Bard was dead and weren't when Janna was. You can say it's a little bit of luck and perhaps just a little bit of timing on the side of blue team. That damage is absurd as we see a second needlessly large rod in Shogat's inventory along with six stacks on the Dark Seal. This guy is 
Not at all going the tank route, opting to be pure damage choker. Peterson gets a nice spear into Barb, doesn't quite have the damage to finish him off through all of the heals and buffs that a Lulu and a Bard can provide to themselves. But they do build, burn quite a few cooldowns and don't really spend anything too impactful themselves, just a few Qs and Ws. Oh, very nice rupture before Ezreal has time to shift away, but there's too many members of Red Team around for him to follow up. And now with the Ezreal ulti coming through, they're going to be chugging away onto this Cho'Gath, who is relatively squishy. Despite the fact that he has all that health, he has no armor or MR to back it up. Now Dopey forced to burn the monsters just to try and keep his team alive. They might be going down though. There's the shutdown kill onto the Nidalee. This is a triple kill so far for the blue build Ezreal. This is their carry going into the late game. The kills are going right where they need to, but finally, Blue Team is able to turn it around as Red dives a little bit too greedily and a little bit too deep. And with the consistent damage output from a Kale and a Corky, they actually managed to get the turnaround ace. They were so good. It was such a good team fight for Red Team until they dove into that secondary turret. And that just that seems so obvious in hindsight, but you know, they 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 were being choked out for the majority of this game, and it was really, really rough <laughs> having to play against this nine and up until that point, oh, Nidalee jungle, who just seemed to be everywhere in the map all at the same time, and they finally got an opening, and they had killed the Cho'Gath, and things were looking up, so they wanted to press it. They wanted to push their advantage. Pardon me. But they, but they pushed a little bit too hard. And the door came back around and slammed him right in the face. So, you gotta be careful. Team fights are like revolving doors. If you push it too hard, it, it can end painfully for you. Doki might be in a little bit of trouble as he clears out that pink ward. Does just about get himself away. Has to pop the Talisman of Ascension, though. Not too terribly long of a cooldown. Looks like Bard might be in some trouble of his own, and this time he does not have a Talisman of Ascension to escape, nor is there a Lulu ulti, but he does have a Magical Journey. Makes it across the wall into the red buff pit. Safeguard as well, keeping him alive a little bit longer. But again, not really much too impactful burn from Blue Team, and a lot of health gone for Bard. Corky with the package available, that's... Honestly, the main engage tool, aside from just a really nice knockup from Cho'Gath for Blue Team. That's the one thing that their comp is really missing quite a bit. Is some strong engage. And there's the package burned, as I assume it was just about to time out. So he simply drops it for the hell of it in the middle of the lane. And they peel off back towards the Dragon Pit. No Dragon for a little while yet, but uh, Ezreal's opting into this 1v1 against Kale. Not sure if that was the great move, but there was nothing around really to punish him there. He got some good damage, and I suppose he has quite a bit of lifesteal to bring himself back up to full health. Ezreal's playing sort of the front line for Red Team right now. He's dodging away from the skill shots, but he's down below half health. And this could end up poorly for him if he just gets hit by one spear or one rupture. Especially if he continues to shift forward like that. That's his main get-out-of-jail-free card, and uh, if he uses it when he's not even in jail, well, that could end up poorly. Baron is up. Rift Herald has given way to his older, larger cousin. It looks like Red Team is looking for some kind of counter-engage. Malphite's standing right outside of the bush, though. There's another shift forward from Ezreal. He gets silenced off. But nothing is touching this guy, despite how aggressively he's playing. Temper Fate can land onto only Corgi. Rupture lands, however, onto Lulu, and the back line of Red Team is getting shredded to pieces as Zerger simply isn't tanky enough to sustain his engage. Double Rupture from the Cho'Gath, and that is going to spell the end of this team fight for Red Team. Double Rupture into a double kill. This could spell the end of a lot more things for Red Team. Not quite the game yet, I wouldn't imagine, but... There's the possibility of a Baron here. Things are rapidly falling to pieces. This aggressive Ezreal play hasn't gotten himself killed, but... Maybe a bit more of a passive playstyle might have been the call here. He didn't have anything to follow up on when that Malphite ulti went in, and it landed onto two or three members there. But maybe they can salvage it in this Baron play. And Lee Sin get the steal. He... It hasn't gone down yet. It hasn't gone down yet. No! He, he does! He got it! Beautiful! He gets the steal! Both him and Ezreal do go down. But uh, in the end, I would say two kills for Baron is worth it, especially when you're in a, as desperate a position as Red Team is starting to be in here. 23, 24 minutes onto the board. Whew. That, that was a close one. That was... I honestly, like... I sat up in my chair. I was... I was just... Really into that Baron Steel. I love Baron Steels. Baron Dragon Steels, the best part of this game, in my opinion. 
that and early landing phase and bottom lane. Those are my two favorite things about League of Legends. Two favorite portions of the game. That to be fair, I like quite a bit about this game. I have been talking about it for about two years now. <laughs> I don't think I would keep going if I, if I didn't enjoy it quite a bit. Just the unstoppable force used simply to get away. You see a death cap completed for Cho'Gath. And another kill completed for Azrael. Kale was going around the corner, but it was the wrong corner to be going around, and for Lee Sin, this is the wrong corner as well. Good lord! True damage, scaling with AP. Turns out it's pretty strong, boys. Double stun onto Dope you and Corgi. The burst over the wall from Ezreal will trade back another kill for Red Team. It was trading pick after pick. Nice cosmic binding, but there's just nothing to follow up with Red Team. Some slows from Ezreal might be enough. Oh, that that Q didn't quite land, but Ezreal is shifting right into the face of two foes. There's the cougar form leaping back onto him, but with the backup of a Lulu ulti. Ezreal made the right call to be aggressive there, but perhaps the wrong call to be aggressive around that corner. As Cho'Gath, with all of his cooldowns available, and all of his health available, will happily pick up another double kill for himself, going 10 and 3 so far. And that Baron buff really hasn't done too much. Denying it from Blue Team was imperative. Like, if Blue Team had the Baron buff right now, this game would probably be over in the next few minutes. But Purple Team didn't actually get to do anything with it themselves, and that always feels bad. Though I imagine it did feel pretty good to steal it. Dragon now gonna be up. This will be the third one for Blue Team if they can manage to secure it. And I don't really see why they wouldn't be able to. They've got enough vision in the surrounding area and enough consistent damage between Corky and Kale to shred it to pieces very quickly. There's the Cho'Gath ulti just to secure the kill. Get himself another stack of that too. And that is another moderately recent change to Cho'Gath that some people may not know about. Um, they actually have to the cooldown of his ultimate if it's used on a minion or monster. Make it a little bit easier to stack up that passive without giving up pressure in lane or before a team fight. Dopey gets hit by the Tempered Fate, but really nobody in, in line to follow up on that. We're going to be Bard ulti down. Pretty impactful ulti for these team fights if plays correctly. A little bit worrisome that it's out of commission right now. now. There's not much for Blue Team to force a team fight around, though, to be fair. So it looks like they're grouping towards mid lane. Want to push that out? They do have Dofu heading on back home to base. And um, this is an interesting co choice here for Corky. He's gone with the, um, the Trinity Force. Not too interesting. I mean, that, that's fairly sad in our Corky, but it's not something we've seen too recently. More often than not, he'd go with a bit more of a traditional AD carry build and just. And then into the Sorcerer shoes as well. But we do see at least that portion of the regular Corky build coming out here. I rather like the Trinity Force choice. It's good. These team fights are quick and snappy, and having that extra burst is going to be pretty important as there's the package laid down. A red carpet for Red Team to walk across. Aren't they gladly do step on those hot coals to be able to take out Gianna. Ezreal continuing to play the aggressive front line for his team. Forces away the Italy. Takes half of his health as part of the bargain, though. And Italy has quite a bit of healing to her name. It's also a relatively tanky in Italy as well. Gone with that Rod of Ages from the jungle. Uh, True Shot Barrage comes through, but Corky manages to sidestep it. Nicely done. Red Team is more than likely going to be getting the secondary turret in the mid lane, but there is a Cho'Gath split pushing top. He doesn't do a ton of damage to turrets, but he does enough to be a threat. There's the Tempered Fate. It's back up, and it is used in the mid lane. There is the Divine Intervention as well into Kale, but it's just going to be buying a little bit of time. Corky, in the meantime, off to the side of the fight, will be taking Lulu out of the picture. Cosmic Binding flies through, but it doesn't quite find its mark. We still have this split pushing Cho'Gath in the top lane. Dopu is going to go down alongside her AD carry. But that is an inhibitor fallen in the top lane. Red Team is only sending Lee Sin back to deal with this. Let's, uh, I can't do picture in picture because this ain't the LCS, but let's go swap over to the top lane and see what's going on up there. Oh my god, he nearly kills the Lee Sin. They just can't stop this Cho'Gath. Alright, he's going to be backing out now that he's got the inhibitor. I think he got one Nexus turret as well. And that heads up Cho'Gath play manages to, despite the fact that Blue Team lost the fight in the mid lane, pick up a kill, pick up, rather, 
a map wide advantage for himself and Peterson might be picking up a kill here. No, there's the turnaround from Zeroger! He doesn't go down! Flash over the wall from Shogat though, he's going to finally finish it off. There's the arcane ship forward, and Shogat will pay with his life for taking Malphites. Zeroger didn't die to the Italy! Oh, it was so close. That must feel really bad. <laughs> Uh, he had like 50 health left or something along those lines and he turned back around with the unstoppable force CC chain the Nidalee to death And then was killed by a feral screen, but you know for a few moments there I thought the dream was alive. I thought the Malphite was gonna be the boy who lived The rock who lived, but he didn't oh, Nice knock up He's gonna be turning this back around on the release in there's the flash forward actually from Kale Gets dragons rage back into his team though And it's going to be Lee Sin heading on home back to base. As we see ward battles in the tiny little brush outside of Blue Team's base. Exciting. We got some on my way pings towards the bot lane tower for Red Team. I think that was Bard in the bottom side. Managed no, it wasn't Bard. Who was that? Somebody was sitting in the little pixel brush in the lane there. I didn't quite see the champion model. The camera didn't focus on it, but they managed to get away and just just in time before the blue team checked that bush. It was a harrowing experience, if ever you've had one. Trap into the bush to get a bit of vision for Pito Sin. They're just halting these bases as best they can while they stall for time and push up the wave here. Now while Cho'Gath isn't the best at taking turrets, Kale, Kale on the other hand, can shred these. So if Red Team does not mount a defense quickly enough, this is going to be a very dead secondary turret and it looks like they did not mount the defense in time. That thing is burning and breaking. It is in fact literally burning. That's not just a um That's just not just a turn of speech there. The secondary dragon buff does now give you a true damage burn on the turrets. Ezreal again shifting forward, but he's always finding the right places to do this, away from enemy aggression, but getting some good damage off. There's the stun still on the dope you, even though he flashes over the wall. When that thing hits you, it even if you flash away, it's, it works like Darius Pull used to. Even if you flash away, provided from the first point where it hit you, it manages to hit a wall. Even if you shift away, or flash away or something, it'll still stun you wherever you landed. And I apologize for those notification sounds in the background. That is my steam going off, it's not yours. So, um, don't alt tab away. Keep your eyes peeled and focused on this video here. As Bard chases the wrong prey into the enemy jungle. There's the Blade of the Ruin King proc from Ezreal. He's gonna be slowing down this Cho'Gath a little bit. If he can just land one more Q, they're probably gonna be able to get this kill. And there it is, the giant falls. But is it enough? Kale is in the enemy base. She is doing some massive damage to this Lee Sin. Steric Gage is popped by the super minion, so Kale doesn't even have to deal with that. But what Kale does have to deal with is the rest of Red Team, who show up in righteous force and halt any dreams of a backdoor. No ex peke play for this Kale. At least, not yet. I've seen a lot of backdooring action this game. We might yet see more. Speaking of which, we've got some minions taking their part. Blue team's base, they've got supers on the Nexus turrets. This may turn out rough. They've got quite a bit of damage coming through on there. Let's go ahead and swap the camera over there as we see some Nexus turrets falling. They are both below half. Super minions finally fall to the lasers. Is that turret gonna die? No, it didn't. Corky showed up just in time. But, we have a similar situation on the top side and it's only Bard left to defend. The secondary Nexus turret for Red Team has fallen. Bard is doing his absolute supporting best to take out the super minions, but he just can't do it. It's not his job. Somebody else come and help that man out. Meanwhile, Pedersen needs some help in the jungle. Blade of the Ruin King is going to be slowing him down, and it's just a matter of time here. He buys a bit more of that with the Zonius Hourglass, but with a cursory Q over the wall, Ezreal is easily going to secure himself that kill. And with the enemy jungler dead, Red Team sets their eyes on Baron. And why shouldn't they? They have a man advantage on the board, the most important man advantage. They have a smite advantage. All right, they started off. The giant purple lizard does quite a bit of damage. There's the flash out of the tempered fate, though, as Cho'Gath is split pushing up in top lane. It looks like he'll be able to get this inhibitor, but with Lee Sin on his way up, they may 
They may be able to take out the giant once again. He's not so giant anymore, having lost a lot of his beast stacks. He's going in towards the enemy nexus, but the Sonic Wave connects, and that is a very dead Shogur. Double kill for Ezreal here. This is looking grim for Blue Team. Oh my god, is this how it ends? The Baron is available. Red Team has a huge man advantage on the map now. Nidalee is going to be respawning soon, so Lee Sin has to get his way over to the Baron pit if he wants to make sure that his team gets this. And he really wants to make sure that his team gets this, because if they give up this Baron, that that would throw this counter throw in the other direction. There would just be more throwing than a Major League dodgeball game. Oh no, Zerogar misses the Malphite ulti. Pedersen turns back around onto him. There's a secure from Lulu, of all champions, onto the Baron. And this game has become an absolute mess. But Ezreal is looking to clean it up. Another Q does not quite land on the Peterson. He saved his Arcane Shift just for this occasion, though, and he shows it to the Kitty. Dashing away into the range of his supportive Lulu friend. They easily pick up another two kills for Red Team. They do have to regroup and hold off top lane. That should take them just 30-40 seconds at the most, and with that Baron buffed recall, they can easily group up and make a push happen. Perhaps in the mid lane, perhaps in bot. It's most likely mid lane, seeing as the inhibitor turret is already down in that lane. But other than that, this game is... It's looking like Red Team has an opening right now. They have an opportunity, but they're not really grouping. They've, they've left their Malphite in the bottom lane. They need him to make the engage happen. He's their best engage tool, unless Lee Sin can land an insect onto somebody. Which it looks like he's really hungering for that right now. They still have a two-man advantage for the next ten seconds or so, so that's going to be more than enough to get this inhibitor. But this could be the game if they take this team fight well, and they've got the ability to team fight here. Ezreal has become monstrous, and the amount of shields and heals they can throw his way makes him nigh on unkillable, unless Cho'Gath can land a beautiful combo onto him while he's, say, away from the Lulu or something, which really shouldn't happen. Corky gets chunked away. There's the Malphite ulti lands only on a Cho'Gath who gets golden locked in the air. I've never seen that before. That was really neat. Gobi is going to be popping the monsoon, but it really doesn't do that much as Lee Sin back behind enemy lines is going to be kicking people to their deaths. Ezreal is legendary, as he well should be. This guy has been playing beautifully this game. I question a few of his aggressive plays, but they are paying off. Huge dividends. Red team now with the victory firmly in their grasp would have to throw very hard to toss it back over to blue. There's the Nexus turret falling. They've got supers though. If you look over at their side of the base, they've got supers pushing into the top lane. They have to get the victory in the next few minutes here. They have no time to dawdle. And all right, they won't be dawdling. That's gonna be GG. That game got really exciting in the last few minutes. Thank you all for watching. My name is Octavian and I'll see you all next time. Hello everybody, thank you for watching, and I just wanted to take advantage of the end of the video here to put the runes and masteries up on the screen for anybody who doesn't want to click through into the description. Uh, you can find links to them down there as well. I also wanted to thank Epic Skillshot one more time for letting me host this series on his channel with him. This is something that I've been really interested in doing for a long time, and I'm really excited to finally be able to get it off the ground. And uh, I wanted to solicit any opinions, any advice that anybody watching has for us. If you feel like you can help us make this series better, then go ahead, let us know in a comment below the video. I promise you, I'll be reading each and every one of them. Anyways, that's it for me for, the, for uh, today. I hope I'll see you all next time.